On April 9, Oklahoma State University hosted a drag queen story hour for children as young as two years old on its campus. The event was part of the university's Pride 2022 celebration. A description for the program stated two drag performers would read books to all attendees and that the drag queen story hour was geared toward children between the ages of two to eight, but that all ages were welcome to join in on the fun. You heard right. A major university, paid for by the good conservative citizens here in the heartland of America, is openly declaring that it is working to groom our children and that they are starting when they are as young as two years old. This nonsense is pervasive across our nation. What happens in Vegas doesn't stay in Vegas. If it's happening in Oklahoma, it is happening in your own backyard. You've been told before of the Chicago Public School District, where they now provide prophylactics to all fifth graders throughout the city's school system because they want to make condoms available to students when they think they need them. You've been told before of the Arizona Department of Education's promotion of books and research papers that claim babies as young as three months old already harbor sexual biases that demand the state's intervention. You've been told before of New York City's Justine Enfant, who proudly defends teaching first graders in Manhattan how to masturbate while at the same time teaching porn literacy to juniors at New York's Columbia Grammar and Prep. And then there is the National Education Association. You've been told before of this organization's official declaration at its last annual conference, where its members voted to codify the following, we resolve to develop a study to critique cis-heteropatriarchy, in other words, the NEA is telling you straight up that they will be teaching your children that two-parent families, traditional morality and heterosexual fidelity should be dismantled and replaced by their neo-Marxist sexual nihilism. You've been told before of Bartlesville Public Schools in Bartlesville, Oklahoma where they now openly promote Toni Morrison's book, The Bluest Eye, which includes a full-page salacious description of a father raping his daughter. You have been repeatedly told of all of this. You've also been told of last summer's production of the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir, where they sang over and over and over again. We'll convert your children. It happens bit by bit. Quietly and subtly. And you will barely notice it. We'll convert your children. Yes, we will. There's really no escaping it. We'll convert your children. We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. We're coming for your children. We'll convert your children. The bottom line is this. Your public schools are grooming your children. This is just a fact. They admit it. They are doing it openly and without apology, and they are starting before your children can even recite their ABCs. This is not a QAnon conspiracy, nor is it the moral panic of homophobic conservatives who are just freaking out. This garbage is real. It is simply and clearly a fact. But there's more. Not only are your local schools abusing your sons' and daughters' hearts, minds and souls, but they are also abusing their bodies. America's public schools have become hunting grounds for sexual predators. Chris Rufo reported the following, the most comprehensive analysis concerning sexual abuse in America's public schools, published by the U.S. Department of Education, estimates that nearly 10% of K-12 students have been victims of sexual misconduct by a public school employee. In case you missed it, Mr. Rufo just shined a light on the ugly fact that our own government is admitting our public schools are sexually abusing 10% of your children. That's more than 4.5 million children nationwide. In 2014, the Government Accountability Office published a report warning of all this. They said that public school employees were grooming students with the intent to perpetrate future sexual abuse or misconduct. That misconduct includes grooming and chemically castrating your child to validate their woke agenda. They told us that educators were exhibiting patterns of grooming behaviors such as sexually charged communication aimed at explicit sexual contact with the child. Pushing drag queen story hours for two-year-olds at Oklahoma State. Distributing condoms to fifth graders in Chicago. Teaching masturbation to first graders in New York. Fixing sexual biases of three-month-old babies in Arizona. Critiquing cis-heteropatriarchy at the National Education Association. And, readings on salacious incest in Bartlesville. Maybe when they tell us, we'll convert your children.
We're coming for them. We're coming for your children. We're coming for your children. We should start believing them. There are way too many people arguing way too hard to tell kids what they do with their peepees. To explain critical race theory, it helps to begin with a brief history of Marxism. Originally, the Marxist left built its political program on the theory of class conflict. Karl Marx believed that the primary characteristic of industrial societies was the imbalance of power between capitalists and workers. The solution to that imbalance, according to Marx, was revolution. The workers would eventually gain consciousness of their plight, seize the means of production, overthrow the capitalist class, and usher in a new socialist society. It failed, over and over and over. But rather than abandon their political project, Marxist scholars in the West simply adapted their revolutionary theory to the social and racial unrest of the 1960s. Abandoning Marx's economic dialectic of capitalists and workers, they substituted race for class and sought to create a revolutionary coalition of the dispossessed based on racial, ethnic or more recently gender categories. Critical race theory is an academic discipline, formulated in the 1990s and built on the intellectual framework of identity-based Marxism. Relegated for many years to universities and obscure academic journals, it has increasingly become the default ideology in our public institutions over the past decade. It has been injected into government agencies, public school systems, teacher training programs, and corporate human resources departments in the form of diversity training programs, human resources modules, public policy frameworks, and school curricula. Basically, they're indoctrinating your kids to be good little communists. Hello. Uh, I've been a resident of Girls Eel for about five years now. Uh, my wife and I came here with our three children for the schools primarily. And unfortunately, uh, over the last couple of years, we just found that it wasn't a good fit for us. And we now pay for private schools. Um, we also did this during a time when we were also paying a premium to cross that bridge every day. Uh, so education, safety, and mental, uh, mental well-being is, is paramount for us when it comes to our children. Um, with regards to recent hires, this is unfortunately validates some of the concerns that we saw uh, several years ago. Um, but there's a, there's a larger problem here is that, uh, like, like was recently said, if there is a gap in the process, and having been involved in hiring before, um, nothing's worse than having to own a bad hire. Uh, I, I can say that firsthand. Um, I've had some things I've had to look in the mirror and say, I did this. I created this problem, and I had to own it and I had to fix it. And I would rather spend my tax dollars on a lawsuit today to fix a problem than a lawsuit two years from now and there's a body count of children around it. Okay, that's all I have to say. You know you're in a cult if 1. You believe you are what your imagination says you are. Delusional, characterized by or holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, typically as a symptom of a mental condition. You know you're in a cult if. 6. You believe reality isn't real. Delusional, characterized by or holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, typically as a symptom of a mental condition. You know you're in a cult if. 10. Thanks to Jamie Lee Curtis who didn't know how many Oscars she'd won, they, them can't count. You know you're in a cult if. 11. You will cry in protest to take a real black woman off a syrup bottle and a Quaker off a box of oats named Quaker Oats, only to put a fake white woman on a beer can. All while saying, I can't believe they're so upset over a beer can. Bud Light parent Anheuser-Busch's stock has lost $27 billion over Dylan Mulvaney. You know you're in a cult if. 13. If you get triggered because someone doesn't think you're special because you were born into one of the CRT-approved victim groups, 
they believe deeds and personal responsibility warrant pride. You know you're in a cult if 18. Lost your shit over to kill a mockingbird and huckleberry finn but are screaming about banning books with gay sex and masturbation in school libraries. Even though the books aren't banned, you can purchase and beat off to them at your leisure. You know you're in a cult if 20. Will lie even with irrefutable evidence. You know you're in a cult if 21. Being so filled with hate, you will groom, mutilate, and murder your own children, all while calling your opposition fascists. You know you're in a cult if 22. Believes that out of 7 billion people on the planet, white, straight, males are somehow oppressing everyone else. You know you're in a cult if 23. Will lose your shit when someone points out that you're not oppressed, you're just stupid. You know you're in a cult if 25. Will refer to a biology book as right-wing propaganda. You know you're in a cult if 26. Will lose your shit if someone actually uses proper English instead of your made-up pronouns. You know you're in a cult if 32. Are the same people who say you can't indoctrinate kids to be gay with a book or a drag show but continually accuse the church of doing that very thing. Although religion isn't taught in schools, and you're not forced to go to church. You know you're in a cult if. 33. When someone is simply talking science and common sense, you will try to bring religion into it. Well, you know the church. Well then, don't go to church. It's not against the law. Not going to school is. You know you're in a cult if 34 will use unrelated behavior to justify their sick, grooming behavior. You know you're in a cult if 38 you resort to insults as you can't handle the truth. Delusional, characterized by or holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, typically as a symptom of a mental condition. Patients with schizophrenia may show dysfunctional impulsivity and impulsive aggression. You know you're in a cult if 39. Will lose your shit when someone says you're in a woke cult, and to prove you're not, you do the things on this list over and over and over. You know you're in a cult if 40. Will accuse your opposition of that which you are guilty. You know you're in a cult if 46. Consider chemically castrating a pedophile horrible and inhumane, but chemically castrating a child just dandy.